Do you know who the painter of the famous Mona Lisa painting is? Leonardo da Vinci was born on April 15, 1452, in the Tuscan hill town of Vinci, in the lower valley of the Arno River in the region of Florence. He was the illegitimate child of Messer Piero Fruicino di Antonio da Vinci, a Florentine notary, and Caterina, a peasant who was probably a slave from the Middle East. Leonardo did not have a surname in the modern sense, da Vinci means of Vinci, his full birth name was Leonardo di Ser Piero da Vinci, meaning Leonardo, son of, Mess Ser Piero of Vinci, little is known about Leonardo's early life. He spent his first five years in the hamlet of Anciano, then lived at the home of his father. Grandparents and uncle, Francesco, in the small town of Vinci. His father married a 16-year-old girl named Albiera, who loved Leonardo but died at a young age. In later life, Leonardo only recorded two incidents from his childhood. One thing he took as a sign was when a kite fell from the sky and hovered over his cradle, its tail feathers touching his face. The second occurred while exploring in the mountains. He discovers a cave and is afraid that a large monster may be lurking there, and is driven by curiosity to find out what is inside. Leonardo's early life has been the subject of historical conjecture. Vasari, a biographer of the 16th century Renaissance painter, tells how a local farmer requested that Ser Piero ask a talented child to paint a picture on a round plaque. Leonardo responded with a painting of a snake spitting fire that was so terrifying that Ser Piero sold it to a Florentine art dealer, who in turn sold it to the Duke of Milan. Meanwhile, having made a profit, Ser Piero buys a plaque decorated with a heart pierced by an arrow, which he then gives to the farmer. In 1466, at the age of 14, Leonardo was apprenticed to one of the most successful artists of his time, Andrea di Sion, known as Verrocchio. Verrocchio's workshop was in the intellectual current of Florence, assuring the young Leonardo of an education in the central fields of the humanities. Other famous painters who apprenticed or were associated with this workshop include Ghirlandaio, Perugino, Botticelli, and Lorenzo di Credi. Leonardo will be exposed to a wide range of technical skills and have the opportunity to learn drawing, chemistry, metallurgy, metalworking, plaster casting, leatherworking, mechanics and carpentry as well as the artistic skills of drawing, painting, sculpting and model making. Most of the large production of paintings in Verrocchio's workshop was carried out by his employees. According to Vasari, Leonardo collaborated with Verrocchio on his The Baptism of Christ, painting a young angel holding Jesus' robe in a manner so superior to that of the master that Verrocchio put down his brush and never painted again. This may be an exaggeration. A closer look at the painting reveals that many things have been painted or repaired in tempera using the new technique of oil painting, natural scenes, rocks that can be seen through the flowing river are brown and most of the figure of Jesus provides evidence. Leonardo's hand, Leonardo himself may have been the model for two of Verrocchio's works, including the bronze statue of David in the Bargello and the Archangel Michael and Tobias and the Angel, in 1472. At the age of 20, Leonardo qualified as a master in the Guild of St. Luke, a guild of artists and doctors of medicine, but even after his father placed him in his own workshop, keeping him with Verrocchio to such an extent that he continued to collaborate with him. Leonardo's earliest known work is a pen and ink drawing of the Arno Valley, drawn on August 5, 1473. Professional Life Court records from 1476 show that Leonardo and three other young men were charged with sodomy and acquitted. From this date until 1478 there are no records of his work or even his whereabouts, although it is assumed that Leonardo had his own workshop in Florence between 1476 and 1481. He was commissioned to paint an altarpiece in 1478 for the chapel of St. Bernard and the 1481 Adoration of the Magi for the monks of San Donato Escopito. In 1482 Leonardo facilitated peace between Lorenzo de' Medici and Ludovico e il Moro, Duke of Milan. 
Leonardo wrote letters to Ludovico, explaining his engineering and painting skills. He created a silver lyre shaped like a horse's head, which he sent to Milan. Leonardo continued to work in Milan between 1482 and 1499. He was commissioned to paint the Virgin of the Rock for the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception and the Last Supper for the Monastery of Santa Maria del Grazie. While living in Milan between 1493 and 1495 Leonardo listed a woman named Caterina among his dependents in his tax documents. When she died in 1495, a list of her funeral expenses shows that she was his mother, his work for Ludovico included floats and pageants for special occasions, dome designs for Milan Cathedral and models of large equestrian monuments for Francesco Sforza, Ludovico's predecessor. Leonardo modeled a large horse in clay, which became known as the Gran Cavallo, and its size exceeded two large equestrian statues of the Renaissance. Seventy tons of bronze were set aside for its casting. The monument remained unfinished for several years, which was not unusual for Leonardo. In 1492 the model was completed, and Leonardo made detailed plans for its construction. Michelangelo rudely implied that Leonardo couldn't play him. In November 1494 Ludovico gave bronze to be used as cannon to defend the city against Charles VIII's invasion. At the start of the Second Italian War in 1499, the invading French troops used a life-size clay model of the Gran Cavallo for target practice. With the overthrow of Ludovico Sforza, Leonardo, along with his assistant Celia and his friend, the mathematician Luca Pasiali, left Milan for Venice, where he worked as a military architect and engineer, devising methods to defend the city against naval attacks. Upon his return to Florence in 1500, he and his household became guests of the Servite monks at the Santissima Annunziata Monastery and were given a workshop where, according to Vasari, Leonardo created a cartoon of the Virgin and child with Saint John the Baptist, a work that met with such admiration that men and women Young and old flocked to see it as if they were at a great festival. In 1502 Leonardo served Cesare Borgia, son of Pope Alexander VI, acting as a military architect and engineer and traveling throughout Italy with his patron. He returned to Florence where he rejoined the Guild of St. Luke on October 18, 1503, and spent two years designing and painting the large mural of the Battle of Anghiari for the Signoria with Michelangelo designing its companion work, the Battle of Cassina. In Florence in 1504, he was part of a committee formed to relocate, against the artist's wishes, Michelangelo's statue of David, in 1506 he returned to Milan. Many of Leonardo's most prominent students or followers in painting knew or worked with him in Milan, including Bernardino Luini, Giovanni Antonio Boltrafio, and Marco Dagione. However, he did not stay long in Milan as his father had died in 1504, and in 1507 he returned to Florence trying to resolve issues with his brothers regarding his father's estate. In 1508 he returned to Milan, living in his own house at Porta Orimtal in the parish of Santa Babila. Old age, from September 1513 to 1516, Leonardo spent most of his time living in the Belvedere at the Vatican in Rome, where Raphael and Michelangelo were active at the time. In October 1515, Francois I of France retook Milan. On December 19, Leonardo was present at the meeting of Francois I and Pope Leo X, which took place in Bologna. It was for Francois that Leonardo was tasked with making a mechanical lion that could walk forward, then open its chest to reveal a bunch of lilies. In 1516, he entered Francois' service, being given the right to use the manor of Clos Luce near the king's residence at the royal Chateau Amboise. It was here that he spent the last three years of his life. Accompanied by his friend and pupil, Prince Francesco Melzi, Supported by a pension of 10,000 scudi, Leonardo died at Clos Luce, France, on May 2, 1519. Francois I had been a close friend. 
Vasari recorded that the king held Leonardo's head in his arms as he died, although this story, favored by the French and depicted in romantic paintings by Angra, Manegiat and other French artists, is probably more legend than fact. Vasari also tells us that in his last days, Leonardo summoned a priest to confess his sins and received the Holy Sacrament. In accordance with his wishes, 60 beggars followed his coffin. He was buried in the St. Hubert Chapel in Andois Castle. Melzi was the main heir and executor. Receiving as well as Leonardo's money, paintings, equipment, library, and personal effects, Leonardo also remembered his other old pupils and companions, Salai and his servant Batista di Velusis, who each received half of Leonardo's vineyard, his brother who received land, and his servant woman who received a black cloak filled with fine items fringed with fur. Some 20 years after Leonardo's death, Francois was reported by the goldsmith and sculptor Benevenuto Cellini as saying, there never was another person born in the world who knew as much as Leonardo, not so much about painting, sculpture, and architecture, besides that he was a very great philosopher.